good morning students today we'll be uh, continuing with our discrete fourier transform using matrix method and we will also be discussing about inverse discrete fourier transform and then we will also find the relationship between dft and dtft so calculation of dft using matrix method so this matrix method uh, you should be using it only uh, if specified and when you solve uh, more uh, higher order complex problems uh, in this chapter itself you will be seeing it later at that time alone you can use this matrix method this is uh, given in order to make your uh, computations easier so you know that very well n point dft is specified in this particular equation so here what we are trying to do is here this uh, factor e power minus j 2 pi by n so you can see that this factor e power minus 2 pi by n right so this factor is taken and represented as a twiddle factor called as w n right so now rewriting this equation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n w n to the power of k n so this w n we are going to calculate the twiddle factor matrix right so here the rows represent n equal to 0 to n minus 1 k represents 0 to n minus 1 right so if you want to uh, hear the twiddle factor matrix w n to the power of k n right that is twiddle factor for a combination of k as well as n can be represented like this so w n 0 for first row fully will be w n 0 taking into account k value as 0 right for next one for k equal to 1 so when you substitute here k equal to 1 right and at the same time when n equal to 0 you will be getting w n 0 right the next k value equal to 1 and n value equal to 1 see this matrix is k equal to 1 n equal to 1 so you will be getting w n 1 then this one is k equal to 1 and n equal to 2 so automatically you will be getting w n 2 so similarly this last element is wn it is 1 k is 1 this is n minus 1 so w n minus 1 right in the same manner you can proceed on till n minus 1 right so this is the order in which your twiddle factor matrix has been can be formed for any number of points that is n can be 2 n can be 4 n can be 8 or so here uh, computational point maximum you will be getting n equal to 2 and n equal to 4. So let us see how uh, two point total factor matrix is calculated. So uh, as just we as we have told earlier w2 to the power of kn. So here this uh, please keep in mind that um, this represents n. Okay. So here this side you represent n and this side vertically we represent what is called as k so the first element will be n equal to 0 and k equal to 0 so w2 is equal to 0 right the second element again will be uh, k equal to 0 and n equal to 1 so automatically you will be getting w2 0 here again k equal to 1 n equal to 0 so you will get w2 0 and here you get n equal to 1 k equal to 1 so w2 1 so here we know wn can be represented as e power minus j 2 pi by n. So now w2 can be represented as e power minus j 2 pi by 2. Right? So now suppose I want to calculate w2 to the power of 0. I just need to multiply here by 0. Right? So e power, uh, e power minus j theta is again Euler's identity. So when you find out you can uh, very easily it falls into picture. w2 power 0 is e power minus j pi here into 0. So, automatically it will be equal to 1. So, if wherever you have w2 0, it will be 1. Then when you want to calculate w2 power 1, it will be e power minus j pi into 1 that is e power minus j pi. So, e power minus j pi will be cos pi minus j sin pi which is nothing but minus 1. So, that is why you are getting. So, simple substitution of this uh, uh, twiddle factors into the matrix will yield you this particular matrix value. We see what we are seeing is just first we are seeing how to form the total factor matrix later on we will be you seeing how we can use this uh, total factor matrix to find out how right so 
so we'll be continuing with four point twiddle factor matrix so four point twiddle factor matrix you can also represent the twiddle factors w4 power 0 w4 power 1 w4 power 2 w4 power 3 so if uh, we can calculate so since it is going to be a four point twiddle factor matrix you will be having four points right you calculate w4 power 0 by the formula you will be getting it as 1 w4 power 1 you will be getting it as minus j w4 power 2 you will be getting it as minus 1 and w4 power 3 you are getting it as j right so you know right how we do this this is uh, uh, just a, a normal convention so here this is 0 degrees so 0 degrees j means it is 90 degrees right so 90 degrees so 90 degree will come over here minus 1 means what it is 180 degrees so that is why we are uh, representing the same uh, total factor in uh, your plane also and here it is again uh, my uh, 270 degrees or you see you can either write it as 270 minus j is either 270 or you can write it as minus 90 degree right because coming back in uh, reverse here it will be represented as minus 90 degree so all these values so you can form this matrix from the uh, original thing that uh, was stated here right earlier we have seen the student factor matrix just substitute w4 to the power of kn it will yield 4 cross 4 matrix and when you try to find out the values of each and everything it will yield these values just substitute this will be this 4.4 matrix you can very easily th remember this matrix also you can see this row is 1 and this first column is 1 and then you can see that the next one here is minus j minus 1 and j right so this minus 1 is same over here minus 1 this is just the complex conjugate of this minus j plus j and here it is j and this is going to be the complex conjugate minus j right so here you have minus 1 the same minus 1 1 is going to be the center point right so i think when you are uh, look into this matrix you can very uh, easily try to remember this matrix so that you can use it when you are doing the problems so eight point riddle factor so obviously you will be getting eight points over here so when you calculate all these eight points w8 per 0 is 1 w8 power 1 is 0 0.7 minus j 0 0.7 so automatically how will it you have uh, 0 0.7 minus j 0 0.7 so where will it lie on your axis automatically here 0 0.7 will be on positive right minus j 0 0.7 will be on the negative axis that is why you are getting w8 1 here right so similarly w8 2 is uh, minus 90 and so on so you'll be getting a matrix like this you can pause the video try to find out the values and you can check it so now form the twiddle factor matrix like this it will fall in place like this right and then uh, see actually here don't worry about this x of 0 that we'll see later this is just uh, this twiddle factor matrix formation you just need to uh, look into it now so when you substitute this twiddle factors you will be getting a factor like this matrix like this so now knowing what is all these twiddle factors we need to you see how we can find this dft using this matrix method right so this matrix method xn is given as wn matrix x so each one represents matrix so xn is the dft matrix wn is the twiddle factor matrix small xn is the input signal right so capital x of n which is our discrete fourier transform matrix is represented as x of 0 x of 1 x of 2 up to x of n minus 1 right then this small xn this small xn is nothing but your uh, input discrete time signal for example what is your small x n right so it will be nothing but your input sequence x of n which is represented as x of 0 x of 1 and then up to you proceed on right you, you go on till you find small x uh, till you write small x of n minus 1 right so this is your input sequence 
just the same input sequence represented in terms of a matrix. So, DFT is again, uh, it is a 1 cross n minus 1 matrix. Your input sequence is also what? 1 cross n minus 1, right? So, this matrix is 1 cross, that is 1 row and how many columns? n minus 1 sorry it is n minus 1 cross so number of rows are going to be n minus 1 number of columns is going to be 1 so it is n minus 1 cross 1 matrix and your input sequence x of n is also going to be equal to n minus 1 cross 1 matrix right so n minus 1 rows and 1 column this W and twiddle factor we have already seen. If it's going to be a 2 means 2 cross 2, 4 means 4 cross 4. So it is going to be N cross N matrix. Right? So keeping this in mind, we can now directly go into problem. So find a DF, 4 point DFT of F, X of N, input sequence X of N using matrix method. So just apply this matrix equation. Then you can write, see this X of N, uh, it is nothing but X4. You can also write it as x of k, right? So now it's a 4 point. So you put your 4 point twiddle factor matrix, multiply it by 1, 2, 0, 1, which is your input sequence, right? So automatically it's a very simple one. You just need to do normal matrix multiplication. Row multiplied by this column and then sum up everything. Then second row multiplied by this column and sum up everything. So when you do like that, you will be getting the value as x4 as 4, 1 minus j minus 2 and 1 plus j. So, these are the 4 values. So, even if you do it using a normal DFT and your matrix DFT, the value will be same for the DFT. Next, we will go for inverse DFT. So, once you have your frequency spectrum x of k, suppose you want to get back your original signal x of n as I told you earlier related to the synthesis equation. So, here find the inverse DFT of x of k. So, frequency DFT is given 1, 2, 3, 4. Then x of n. So, the synthesis equation, right, is given like this. So, remember the formula. Then for each n, we know it's 4, 4. So, automatically it will n equal to 4. So, x of n, just substitute the values. Then for each and every value of n. So, n value here is what? 0, 1, 2 and 3. So, here uh, in 4 point DFT, 4 point uh, IDFT here, the value of n will be 0, 1, 2 up to 3, right? So, for each value, for n equal to 0, perform computation, you will be getting 5 by 2. Then for n equal to 1, the same computation, you will be getting minus 1 by 2, minus j by 2. You can pause your video always and then you can check up, do it by yourself and find out the answers. For n equal to 2, right and then for n equal to 3 and then x of n right so this is what has been given so next we'll move on to deriving dft from idft or let us see what is the relationship between an idft already in the last class itself i told you what is the difference between dft and idft please put a pause and try to recollect i told the uh, physical significance of difference between DFT and IDFT. The same thing we are going to here represent here analytically, right? So, the difference here is what? IDFT is for, has infinite number of points which cannot be represented in memory, right? So, DFT is the same spectrum which has finite number of points. So, when you sum the one thing over here is we are, uh, I have to change here, we are finding the relationship between DFT, deriving DFT from DTFT, it should not be IDFT, DTFT, right. So, DTFT is, if you sample DTFT for finite number of points, what you get is called as DFT, right. So, discrete time Fourier transform, DTFT is given by, this is a formula for discrete time Fourier transform, right you know how DTFT will look like already I have told you so you can see that the number of points contained is DTFT is infinite DTFT is a periodic continuous function the the uh, please stress on the point continuous function with a period t, 2 pi DFT is obtained by uniformly sampling x of e power j omega 
at the discrete frequencies you are just going to sample at discrete frequencies so how you do this you actually have x axis here as omega right for this omega every point of omega it is continuous but instead of taking continuous we are going to take discrete values of omega and for this discrete values of omega what is the corresponding amplitude right so the frequencies that we are going to discretize here you can see that there are continuously right so now we are going to discretize omega so omega k is equal to 2 pi k divided by n we are discretizing at each values of k right for k points we are discretizing right so you will be getting a discretize like this so when will dft and dtft be equal dft and dtft will be equal at each and every value of omega right for example here if k equal to 0 right omega k right at this frequency k equal to 0 this is dft again when k equal to 0 this is dtft so at this point both are same similarly you take another point you take this point whatever may be this value of omega this point and at the same thing you will be having here omega so at all these discrete instants both dft and dtft are set to same or set to converge right so x of k equal to x of e power j omega at the discrete time points omega equal to 2 pi k divided by n right so now we are going to substitute in dft in the place of e power j omega i am just writing it as substitute 2 in 1 so wherever you have omega you have to write it as 2 pi k so you will be getting x of k equal to summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n e power minus j see you can see that right in the place of omega we are going to substitute it as 2 pi k divided by n k equal to so this is not nothing new equation this is the equation of dft which we are seeing from the very beginning this is just to tell you how we are arriving dft from the dtft equation so please do these practice practice problems compute four point uh, dft using matrix method for the sequence minus one to the power of n and then compute four point dft using matrix method for the sequence x of n equal to sine n pi by 2 so obtain these answers and compare it with the uh, questions that was given in the previous class in the previous class it was given for normal dft so when you compare you will be able to find out that uh, both the answers are same thank you students